Hello my soccer universe. Day 2 of the Euros continued the theme of we have quite some goals but we have rather one-sided games although at least two games yesterday there was a little bit excitement for a TD bit but overall all three games had their deserved winners. We also had fantastic atmosphere from uh, especially the Balkan teams I have to say in Croatia more or less selling out the Olympic Stadion in uh, Berlin and then Albanians taking over the Westfalen Stadion in Dortmund. That was a sight to behold. I wonder why did they put the Italians in the Dortmund end, you know, blue in the Dortmund end. That does not make much sense, but then anyway, uh, enough Albanians there as well. And yes, I think both Swiss and Hungary had some good blocks there as well, although I never saw such a big fan of those Hungarian fans knowing their relationships with the Hungarian government, blah, blah, blah. That's a teeny bit odd and a teeny bit yucky in a way as well. Before we go into the game, I'm usually always playing a little bit of a jersey bingo by guessing what jerseys will the teams play in just ahead of the tournament. This time I didn't publish it because of time constraints. However, it was not my day yesterday. I got a total of four wrong. The only thing I got right is that Spain will play the home jersey. Italy will play with the home jersey. That Switzerland and Hungary completely switched so that Hungary playing their away jersey when they are the home side and then Switzerland. That I did not expect although I think the Hungary away jersey is the nicer one. I have expected Croatia to play in the home jersey but I was not sure if UEFA will allow you know there's a lot of red clashing but on the other side if I think about it, you know, Spain had the blue pants, so the away kit might not work unless you make a mashup. But I also think that would have, I mean, I would have personally enjoyed that one. But I think UEFA is avoiding that as well. And, you know, we won't have it unicolored for Croatia. I think it was fine. I think even Croatia in the one, if they would play back there, this, this would be just fine. I don't know why we are wondering so much about these things and then we're getting weird jersey matchups. And the last one I got wrong is I half expected Albania to play in red, but you know, the other half of me wanted that you may, maybe Albania play in white, so they again play in three different jerseys in the entire Euros. But you know, the red against Italy would work. The only thing that I was wondering, you know, Italy has blue socks, Albania had black socks. That might be a little bit hard for the referee, but I think was not a problem overall. Lastly, I got the jersey matchup for Germany against Scotland also right. However, I know this will be all unicolored, but I think I would love to see Scotland in the traditional kit with the white pants and the red socks and Germany also traditional with black pants. I think this would have made for a much more appealing look. But I guess, yeah, Scotland went all unicolored already from the get go. And so Germany played in all white. Let's go in the Germany group. Group A, where Hungary took on Switzerland, as I said, colors were a little bit odd. And I was actually riding quite high on Hungary. It's a team that had not lost in over a year. So I thought this Hungary team is up to something and then they were complete blah. Nothing happening in Switzerland. A Switzerland side that was really stale. They really rocked Hungary. They were pressing high, they were controlling the game, they were pushing Hungary left and right. And Hungary just tried to stay a little bit like Scotland, compact, but without really attacking uh, the man who is having the ball. It was really, really, really odd performance. And Switzerland duly took the lead, very deserving. So it was the Abisha first half. Abisha playing a deep ball to do a really slicing through the Hungarian defense and then a wonderful finish in the 12th minute. And then it was more of the same uh, Hungary hanging on it was then an Ebisha shot from the edge of the, of the box no one's closing him down and he can just choose his target and it was a beautiful goal I gotta say so uh 2-0 and there was no sign of Hungary coming back although you never know Switzerland again I think in the first 10 minutes of the second half more of the same you know really putting pressure on Hungary but then there was a little chance and then so much life finally gets across it and it finds Vargas head and it's 1-2 and then the game was at a tipping point, there were the chances there for Hungary. Suddenly, Switzerland were not so assured of themselves anymore. But in the end, it was also a really bad mistake by Orban, where he heads the ball directly to Embolo, who had come on. He makes a 3-1 deep in stoppage time. And I think in the last 10, 10 minutes, I always had the feeling that Switzerland will see this out. Switzerland fully deserving that win. Switzerland in a very good position of advancing. Hungary, that took a dent because now you play Germany, that, that will not end well. So goal difference will become a worry. And then, you know, you may have to beat Scotland. And these two teams were the disappointments so far, I gotta say. 
Then we had the Spain against Croatia game, the first big one. It was a really, really weird game because if you look at the stats, it was all for Croatia. And that also is how the game felt, especially in the first half, where Croatia actually tried to have the ball and not allow Spain to dominate their game. How about this is a different Spain side? This is the Spain side that for the first time in over 15 years had less pass completions than their opponent. They also had less passes, which is something that has happened recently, but this is a really, really weird stat. Spain were ruthless. As I said, Croatia controlled the game. However, then Fabian Ruiz has the ball in midfield and you could see the Morata run, he's offside, he's running back and then uh, switch in the other direction. Fabian Ruiz finds him and he runs free on goal. And yes, there was Nico Williams on the outside there. He would have been offside, but it was not Morata. And he, with a very clean finish, 1-0 and Spain are off and running. However, then Kovacic has a pretty big chance of uh, getting an easy equalizer. However, his shot is maybe too easy for Uno and Simon, who is probably the one weak one. I mean, the defense for Spain is the one thing I really do worry about. And we thought that we'll put to a test already because, you know, there are some goals in this Croatia side with, you know, Budimir up front. There's also uh, Kramaric up, up front. So there, there is quite some goal scoring prowess. However, Croatia couldn't really get it going. And so Kovacic shot is uh, easily picked off by Simon. And then it is again in the box. Pedro replaces to Fabian Ruiz who threads it. I think through Pongracic's legs into the net. And after 32 minutes, it's 2-0 for Spain. A score that was never there. Again, Glover Maia have then a chance to pull one back. And I think this would have made the game really exciting. So in this t roughly 10-minute period around where Spain uh, scored the goal, it was a really exciting game. How then uh, Yamal Cross kills the game off uh, and Cavajal just needs to head it in. And Spain are off and running. Now, full disclosure, I watched this game with my little daughter. And we decided because of Kovacic and because of Budomir, two players with a Lusk past, that we were a little bit more for Croatia. And so down mood a teeny bit. We wanted badly Croatia ratio to score and yeah they had some pretty big chances in the second half although there were also some for Spain I mean it could have been also four for Spain they get a penalty the Petkovic then steps up it is parried by Una Simon and then Perisic actually runs into the box squares over to Petkovic it's 3-1 no Perisic was the only player, the only player that was too quick in the box. It was actually quite amazing that there was not a single Spanish player stepping into the box because if there was just with a toe in, it's a retake. No, it was not. And so it was an early evening all for Spain and Spain are off to a good start. Croatia losing by three goals. You know, when you think already about third place teams, Goal difference might play in there. Otherwise, goal difference does matter. Well, goal difference might play in there. This might not be a good result for them. So similar to Hungary, similarly to uh, Scotland, you might be on the outside looking in with such lopsided defeats. And I really think that Croatia didn't necessarily deserve that one. We already saw that with that win, Spain are actually now the top favorites because, you know, it's a very impressive result that actually lifted their rating as well. Over to Dortmund for Italy's clash with Albania. I mean, so many Albanians there. I know Italy fans don't really travel well. well I guess Italy have just won so much and the hype around this team is not that big. But I think similar things can be said for French fans and also a little bit for Spanish fans. And you know, Balkan teams are much more behind their uh, nation, I would say, as well. And they got their moment. I mean, Di Marco's throwing, he wants to throw it to Bastoni, but way too short by Rami intercepts it and yanks it into the net after 22 seconds the fastest ever goal at the euros well it's not world record stuff but it's euro record stuff at least so we are seeing early goals as well at this euro again watch out for austria although i'm not sure if they will do it against france and the stadium erupted this was all albania but i think this also did not help albania because now suddenly there was a whole lot of emotion coming and italy even had control when they were one nil down i mean a minute later pellegrini probably could have found an equalizer already but the golden came and it was exactly di marco and bastoni who made up for their you know not being on the same page it was a corner kick from di marco plays it to pellegrini cross in and everyone forgets about bastoni who heads it in strakos i think did not look all that great either on that one i think a great goalie might save this one in any case it's 1-1 one, one for italy and then um italy very quickly take the lead with a ball it was a little bit ping pong and the ball falling to barella who just takes the shot and 
beautifully slices it in. I mean, he doesn't even hit, hit it full, but what a shot that was. It was a really, really good goal. And it's the fastest that the Italians have scored two goals, at least in a Euro tournament, within 60 minutes, two goals but after being 1-0 down. And so looking at the goal scorers in this first 60 minutes, we have Bayrami, we have Bastoni, we have Barella. Ba, ba, ba. But it didn't continue this way because Italy were in control, but Spalletti afterwards said, yeah, they're too much in love with themselves. So to give them ball every left and right, without really then having as much goal threat. I mean, Italy could have scored so many more goals. They had fully controlled. Were, Albania was not present. I think you could have killed off the game in the first half, similar to what Germany did, similar to what Spain did. And this is the one thing that does worry me about Italy. Second half, more of the same. I mean, Albania was not really in the game. And then Italy stopped playing. And yes, they were really good against the ball. You know, whenever Albania had the ball, Italy would make sure that they quickly intercepted, get onto the ball and uh, have possession themselves. So this is where Italy was really well. But what I didn't like is that they didn't then have this verticality that, for instance, Spain had. And then Albania had a big chance in nine. I mean, if it wasn't for the armpit of Donnarumma, this game would have ended 2-2, a game that Italy should have won easily. I mean, this was 3-4-1, the way it felt. Similar as the Spain-Croatia game fell 3-2. With all these results now, we have a slight change to the projections. I mean, the projections for Groups A and Group B do not really change. I mean, it's still Germany ahead of Switzerland, Hungary, Scotland, and Spain, Italy, Croatia, Albania. However, goal difference and having already lost sends Hungary and Croatia out of the top spots for the third place ranked teams, meaning that Austria and Romania move in for now. And so we have a slight change to the bracket. Doesn't really change much for the quarterfinal. So we are still a Spain, Germany quarterfinal in Stuttgart, which is pretty exciting. And Italy will still meet England. However, the Swiss team is getting better. Still on track for Spain, France final. If everything goes by the book, which it really does. Today, three more games in Hamburg, Poland against Netherlands. That will be an interesting one. I really want to see what the Dutch are doing. Slovenia, Denmark. Mark, I will put a little upset alert there. They've already played in the qualification against each other and Slovenia is not a bad team. And of course, a big one, Serbia against England, where we see probably one of the other tournament favorites. How they can fare against the Serbia team that has a lot of oomph up front, but I'm always worrying about their defense. So it will definitely be interesting. Any case, let me know what you thought about the games yesterday and what do you look forward to today? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!